Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the October 2021 edition of Socialism for All. And it's an audiobook and discussion of the formation of a Palestinian state and the world revolutionary process by Jay Posadas from 1978. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. So this is uh, part of an ongoing series we're doing on Jay Posadas. Jay Posadas was the pseudonym of a couple of Argentine Trotskyists who in the 1950s were part of mainline Trotskyism in South America. Actually, I believe the head of the uh, Fourth International Latin American Division. And then in the 60s and 70s branched off and became their own thing, Posadism. Uh, they have some very unusual positions on things and then also wrote on fascinating and unusual topics such as the relationship of UFOs and nuclear war to socialism, topics which were not often discussed at length by other socialists. And so there's some degree of fascination about Posadism uh, for that reason. We're not Posadists here at the channel, but we're also not real big on Trotskyism either. And this is about as close to Trotskyism as we get. Uh, there is, you know, public interest in Posadism sort of as a curiosity. Um, Personally, I believe that Posadas was interesting for how many predictions he made, uh, and um, many of them did not come to pass. But, I don't know, I always get something out of reading these essays. Uh, it seems to stimulate some kind of interesting thought in me. So, anyway, that is the spirit in which we present these as, uh, you know, taken with a certain grain of salt. I guess, you know, put that as the disclaimer. So... Let's get into this. So uh, the article is headed with a quote. It is necessary to think in terms of federations, of integrations and confederations that respect all the people's roots and languages. And there's an introduction from the Posadists today from June 2016, which is where I got this article. I'll put a link, as always, to the text that I'm reading here. And their introduction says, in this text dated 19 February 1978, the Assad of Syria is the father of the present one in 2016, Bashar. Begin was governing in Israel and Sadat in Egypt. Arafat was then one of the main Palestinian leaders wishing to set up a Palestinian state. The author poses that the construction of such a new state can only be envisaged as part of the unification of the Jewish and Arab masses of the Middle East and beyond. This revolutionary outlook, the only one capable of injecting life into a Palestinian state, presents the Palestinian movements with the need to overcome their patriotic concepts and adopt the perspective of the Socialist Federation in the Middle East. In short, a Palestinian state must emerge as a revolutionary entity or be nipped in the bud by world capitalist competition. So now into the text itself. The rise of a Palestinian state would be no problem, even on a small scale if it were just a matter of creating a state that can develop further. The problem lies in the fact that the very grant of such a state will stop it developing further. The big bourgeoisie will take it over, organize it, and annul it. There's a typo in the next sentence, and I'm not sure how to correct it, so I'm just going to read it as is, with a little sick in parentheses afterwards. The question of a Palestinian state, no longer present as in the past, the same right to live for the Jewish people and for the Palestinians continues, but it has now become part of the global process of class struggle. The Palestinians confront not only the Jewish reactionaries, but the reactionary Arabs as well. The way these reactionaries make a fist against the progress of history is changing the situation. The attitude of the Syrians is unstable. Assad was once as reactionary as Begin. He befriends Begin one day and opposes him the next. The same goes for this appalling character, Sadat of Egypt. This is the conduct of fear. The leaders of the Arab world fear the advance of the revolutionary struggle. Assad perhaps less so, but Sadat definitely. This makes them inconstant. They start diplomatic relations one day and break them off the next. They recall a new ambassador before the old one is even left. It is like something out of the Marx Brothers. The problem of the Palestinian state is no longer posed as in the past. Some Palestinian leaders count on the development of left wings in Arab bourgeois nationalist sectors 
in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. This is not incorrect, and we too hope that they will develop. When it comes to a Palestinian state, however, we do not think that it resolves the problem, for it cannot start, even on a small scale, without at least the right to self-determination, the right to democratic liberties, and the right to seek alliances with the Jewish masses. In the epoch we now live in, the unification of the Palestinian masses with the Jewish masses is indispensable as part of a wider unification with the Arab masses. Appeals for this must be sent. Those who take on this task will need patience and the ability to wait. Asphyxiation awaits those who do not seek this unification, even in a new state. The situation in the Middle East resembles that of the pre-1940s Balkans, with all their disputes and small kingdoms. Capitalism kept its dominion by the constant maneuvering of one state against the other. This only stopped when the Balkans made worker states. See the historic difference between the Balkans with worker states and the Middle East without them. What a difference the worker states make. If it were not for today's worker states, and there's a footnote, this means the USSR in general, capitalism would have nipped in the bud the revolutionary progress of Ethiopia. As things stand, it finds this impossible to do. We agree with calling for a Palestinian state, but with a condition. Appeals must be sent at the same time for the unification of the masses of Israel and those of the Arab world. A Palestinian state can only be unstable. There is no room for the historic development of a Palestinian state. The idea of such a state must be viewed in the wider context of the Palestinians facing both reactionary Jews and reactionary Arabs united against the progress of history. There's a footnote there. Read by J. Posadas, The New Israelo-Arab War in the Class Struggle, 1973, where the author recalls how Sadat returned to the Egyptian army that same year. This is why the small movement of Arafat must seek the unity of the Arab and Jewish masses. Anything less will leave it with no field of action, no means to survive, and the Palestinian state constantly postponed. Those for whom the Palestinian state was the solution would feel deceived. So I'm just going to comment here. This is almost 43 years ago, and Palestinian territory has just shrunk and shrunk. Israel has just expanded and expanded, and Israel has gone even further right wing. They're like extreme right and have been for a long time. I I don't know, you know, again, this is, I feel Posadas did not have a great handle on things. His predictions are often incorrect, sometimes wildly so. Um, You know, that said, many people's predictions don't necessarily come out exactly as planned. Uh, And also, if there's some uncertainty in a situation, you know, it's one thing to sort of go with an optimistic interpretation, uh, just, you know, to sort of inspire some hope when there's no specific reason to think, you know, pessimistically necessarily. In this particular case, talking about unity with the Israeli masses, to me sounds kind of like insanity because... Every interview I've ever seen of Israelis, and granted, these are mostly in very recent years. I mean, it's some of the most hateful stuff you could possibly be taught to think about another group of people. I mean, this is also 10 years after the Six Day War, and I'm just not entirely sure where Posadas is coming from here. So anyway, let's continue. It is necessary to raise this discussion with the Palestinian comrades. Far from going along with things and waiting for change, one must investigate the conditions needed to give life to a Palestinian state. Such a state can only emerge from a struggle to be free of Zionism, free of the Arab bourgeoisies, and free of imperialism. We agree with demanding such a state, and since it can only make a start by imposing itself on this way, the calling for it can serve as a rallying center. This center must soon turn to all the Arab masses and seek unity with them. It should appeal for the unification of countries like Algeria, Syria, and Libya. If it does not act along those lines, it will have no air to breathe. What sense is there in a new state if all it does is compete with the capitalist system? A new Palestinian state that does not aim at eliminating capitalism in the Middle East makes no sense. It would have no means to transcend and therefore no possibility to live. What is the idea behind the creation of a Palestinian state? A great country? But this new state will have to develop economically and compete on the world market. 
but there is no such perspective at all. The creation of a new country on the eve of the collapse of the capitalist system is not what it used to be. It must consider the present historic conditions, like world war approaching. For the Palestinian population seeking an independent state, the path is still open to them to unify and develop as workers' states. Only, they must organize to serve this end and create currents with the political capacity to serve this end. A new fatherland is not the task. It makes no historic sense nowadays. There are not the economic and social conditions for it either, and now less than ever with capitalism engaged in war preparations. The Palestinians frequently use patriotic, local, territorial, or religious language, such as the Jews or the Arabs. We must help the Palestinian comrades to see beyond their leaders' concepts of the fatherland and the nation's destiny. These notions cloud their vision, limiting and obscuring it. Anyone wishing to build a new country must study the prevailing conditions and the reasons for such a wish. There is no doubt that any talk of a Palestinian state is bad news for the capitalist system. Beyond this, however, such a state still has to be made. At the first sign at such a state appearing, the Arab bourgeoisies will take control by giving a leg up to a Palestinian layer. They will then supply this Palestinian bourgeoisie with the means to keep down the rest of the Palestinians. Mind you, even this scenario is impossible. The rise of a Palestinian bourgeoisie now is as unlikely as a big bourgeois development in Jordan, Libya, or Syria. None of these countries, Palestine included, have the possibility or the need to develop as independent competitors. Historically speaking, what is the role of the fatherland? Quote unquote. Analyses and texts are needed to explain how the moving process is casting aside the patriotic, the religious, and the Arab nationalist sentiment. The, quote, fatherland has lost its historic role. Assuming that a Palestinian fatherland emerges, its first act must be to unite the country on an economic basis that enables development. Anything less means that poverty goes on and that a small Palestinian bourgeoisie continues to dominate. This cannot be what the Palestinian masses are longing for. It is necessary to discuss how to organize the Palestinian state for the cultural elevation of all its masses. If the latter are allowed to intervene, they will see to their own elevation. If they are given the time to learn how to intervene, they will create currents and tendencies interested in this matter. What aim for a Palestinian fatherland? Should it cater for 1,000 Palestinians, 10,000 Palestinians, or should it see to the progress of life for all? A fatherland is not much good, if it does not allow the progress of life. Those who built a state for the progress of life were the Bolsheviks. They made one single state, the Soviet Union, out of populations where 32 different languages were spoken. Everyone could keep their own language in that new state, but the Soviet language became the means to communicate and transmit the need to progress. One must pay close attention to these relatively new questions. In Kuwait, a handful of brigands are ruling the country. They are rich enough to turn seawater into drinking water, but they import everything, water included. Each of them wants a car with automatic food and drink distributors at the touch of a golden button, but the rest of the population has no drinking water. What is such a fatherland? We do not ask this question through any sentiment of envy, but to underline the illogicality. We are not opposed to a Palestinian state, only we insist in having it explained and what it must be aiming at. If the idea is to make a great fatherland, we say that this makes no sense. Should the Palestinians come across such an opportunity, they will be given deserts and the most barren lands. It is true that this could still serve as a means to create a center of unification for the Arab masses' struggles and for their attempt at unity with the Israeli masses against the capitalist system. So I'm going to pause here again. These comments to me seem wildly off base on almost every level. Uh, Posadas' first concern is not for the literal survival of Palestinians who, you know, again, uh, fast forward 40 years, this has really come into question at this point. Israel's genocide is just, I mean, it's just been steamrolling through history. And I hear no recognition of that. In fact, Posadas here sounds more like the chauvinists, um, it's some like sort of weird uh, combination of like ultra left and uh, genocide denial almost. 
Uh, it's a really bizarre mishmash of sort of bad positions. But it does remind me of, uh, you know, people who ignorantly will say, uh, you know, oppose things like land back to uh, native people uh, who, you know, had treaties with the U.S. that were violated and so on. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they oppose, you know, more independence for them because, oh, they're just going to make capitalism. This is like literally exactly what uh, Posadas is saying here. There's a little bit of nuance, but this is like the main thrust of what he's saying. Well, we see that being concerned with things like this, you are turning a blind eye to the bigger question of the genocide going on to make room for the colonial project, in this case of Israel. So I'm not sure that Posadas was, you know, the most influential person in the world. But I mean, as far as his influence went, this sounds really harmful to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, this idea of like unity, quote, with the Israeli masses against the capitalist system, that's kind of misunderstanding the settler colonial project of Israel and the genocide that they're doing and how Israelis are taught. Maybe it was a little different in the 70s. I don't know. But, um, you know, today, the interviews I've seen with Israelis, it's just frightening. I mean, the way that they talk, it's like just uh, blistering hot takes of pure ignorance. And it's, it's genocidal. That's what they're being taught. They're being taught a genocidal ideology against Palestine. So that's actually what's happened. And I'm not sure it has anything to do with, uh, you know, tr again, just trying to put these concerns of like, oh, well, you know, if the Palestinians get land, are they going to do capitalism? And it's like, well, you know, uh, living through capitalism is better than dying through what is going on there now. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of an insane set of um, priorities to have. So anyway, let's uh, continue with this text. The sentiments expressed by the other Palestinian leaders like Habacha and Hawatma are strongly patriotic too. They speak as if a fatherland were to resolve all the problems. Rest assured that they will never be granted such a fatherland, not even a desert. And should the Palestinians come to borrow from the Arab bourgeoisies in order to survive, these bourgeoisies will impose their governments, their leaderships, and their police to serve themselves and not the Palestinian people. The pro-Zionist Arab bourgeoisies and imperialism itself keep in their sights every movement seeking liberation and social transformation. They use every means to defeat liberation. The recent war of imperialism against Ethiopia demonstrates this, like the recent repression that took place in Tunisia. This is why no small country today can hope to be allowed to progress and develop by itself and on its own, not even on a bourgeois basis. The Polisario speaks in Spanish and Arabic. French and Arabic are used elsewhere, and other combinations. Small countries are no longer allowed to reach bourgeois development. This is why one must propose federations, integrations, and confederations that respect all the people's roots and languages. There is already enough historic experience, common to all humanity, to deal with these questions. See how Vietnam passed from utter backwardness over to the nationalization of its economy and the planning of it. J. Posadas, 19 February 1978. So there's a couple of footnotes there from the end. Uh, one on Ethiopia. In 1978, a right-wing sector in the revolutionary state of Somalia started a war on neighboring Ethiopia to recover the disputed Ogaden region. The United States started helping Somalia as Ethiopia was now becoming a revolutionary state. On Tunisia, on 26 January 1978, a general strike started in Tunisia at the end of many years of working class struggles. With close ties with the West, the government reacted bloodily. 42 killed in the repression, 325 wounded, 1,000 arrested along with the entire UGTT trade union leadership. And finally, the Polisario Front is an indigenous Sahawari movement for independence against Morocco. On 15 May 2016, a substantial group of Polisario supporters living outside Africa celebrated in Belgium the 43rd anniversary of the birth of their movement. Those are all notes from the editor. So... Yeah, um, you know, my comments again, this is sort of half-assed at best. Uh, this is probably the, my least favorite Posadas article. 
So, I mean, he's making an argument that, you know, if Palestine's going to develop a state, its best bet is to go for a socialist state. Um, again, you know, looking back from 40 years in the future, you know, survival uh, obviously is the first concern. And I mean, the question of sort of beating back the Israeli project in general as being invalid is not even discussed here. Um, and that really may be a fundamental oversight in this entire uh, thing. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, thanks for listening. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to become a patron, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month and get your name on the screen. Every donation is encouraging as well as materially helpful, so I thank you all. If you'd like to help out without a donation, liking, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, commenting, and also sharing the video on your social media, all of that helps to put this channel in front of more eyeballs and give it a boost. So thanks for that. But whatever you do online and in your community in support of socialism and spreading these ideas is great. Thanks for doing it. Join an organization if there's a good one in your area, and we will catch you in the next video.